Hybrid orbitals can be described as a blend between different atomic orbitals in an atom. The valence s orbital mixes with one or more of the valence p orbitals to make the hybrid orbitals. There are three different types of orbitals that we will consider. They are sp, sp2, and sp3. sp orbitals are made from the s and one of the p's. Remember that the p orbitals come in sets of three that are labeled px, py, and pz. If sp orbitals are made from one of each, the resulting hybrid orbitals have an energy that's in between the s and the p orbitals. So after mixing, you have one s and one p orbital combine to make two sp orbitals. Two orbitals in equals two orbitals out. Also, afterwards, you have the remaining p orbitals that remain unhybridized. So you had four orbitals to begin with, and after hybridization, you have four orbitals left over. These hybrid orbitals and the unhybridized p orbitals are all still located on that same central atom. The hybrid orbitals have the following shapes. They consist of one larger lobe and one smaller lobe, and they show up in opposing directions. The remaining unhybridized p orbitals have this standard p orbital shape and are perpendicular to the sp orbitals. I've simply drawn them here as lines for simplicity's sake. sp orbitals are made from the s orbital and two of the p orbitals. Just like with the sp orbitals, the sp2 orbitals are in between the s and the p energy levels, and you also have the remaining unhybridized p orbital. So again, the number of orbitals that are mixed equals the number of hybrid orbitals that are produced. The s and two of the p's are mixed, so you end up with three sp2 orbitals and one remaining unhybridized p orbital. The sp2 orbitals have a similar shape to the other hybrid orbital, Again, they consist of one large lobe and one smaller lobe, again superimposed over that central atom, and you have one remaining unhybridized p orbital, and it again is perpendicular to the hybrid orbitals. In this case, the three hybrid orbitals are in the plane of the screen, so the unhybridized p orbital is sticking into and out of the screen. And I haven't drawn it because it's difficult to draw. The sp3 orbitals are made from the s and all three of the p orbitals. And again, these hybrid orbitals fall in energy between the s and the p orbitals. Their shapes are also similar to the other hybrid orbitals, with one large lobe and one small lobe. In this case, you have four exactly equivalent hybrid orbitals, and there are no unhybridized p orbitals left over. So you can imagine that hybrid orbitals come in sets. They come in sets of two sp's, they come in sets of three sp2's, and they come in sets of four sp3's. The hybridization of a central atom in a molecule can also be worked out uh, from the geometry around that central atom. If you have a linear central atom, that central atom is sp hybridized, so it has two sp orbitals and two unhybridized p orbitals. If you have a trigonal planar geometry around an atom, that means there are three sp2 hybrid orbitals and one unhybridized p orbital. And if you have tetrahedral, there are four sp3 hybrid orbitals. You may have worked this out already from the arrangements of hybrid orbitals that were drawn earlier. The two sp orbitals show up oriented 180 degrees apart from one another, exactly the bond angles you would get in a linear molecule. The sp2 orbitals showed up oriented 120 degrees apart, exactly like you would get in a trigonal planar molecule. And the sp3 orbitals, poorly drawn and not so three-dimensional, uh, showed up at 109.5 degrees apart from one another. So we can do some examples now where we work out the hybridization of a central atom in a given molecule. Consider methane, CH4. 
we have a structure for CH4, a Lewis structure. It contains four electron domains, and all four of them are bonding domains, so it's a tetrahedrally shaped molecule. The central atom is carbon, that carbon is tetrahedral, therefore it is sp3 hybridized. We don't say that the molecule is sp3 hybridized, we only say that the central atom is sp3 hybridized. And if we look at the orbital structure of this molecule, we see four hybrid orbitals, four sp3 hybrid orbitals. We have that tetrahedral shape, but there are hydrogens bonded to this structure. And in order to have a bond, we have orbital overlap. Hydrogens can only ever have s orbitals, so their s orbitals must be overlapping with the sp3 orbitals. Each hydrogen's s orbital overlaps with one of the sp3 hybrid orbitals. Covalent bonds are the results of the overlap between the orbitals of the different atoms. The type of overlap and the type of bond you get when you have an s overlapping with a hybrid orbital is called a sigma bond. If you look at ethyne or acetylene, to use the common name, you see that each carbon is a central atom. And each carbon is linear, there are only two electron domains, so this must be sp hybridized. Again, the molecule is not sp hybridized. Each individual carbon atom is sp hybridized because each carbon is linear. Again, we can draw orbital overlaps to represent the molecule. These represent the sp orbitals coming from each carbon. And on the ends, we have to have hydrogen s orbitals. We have three cases where we have overlap between an s and a hybrid orbital, or between two hybrid orbitals. Anytime you have these types of overlap, s to hybrid or hybrid to hybrid, you have what's known as a sigma bond. The hydrogen to carbon bonds are single bonds. All single bonds are sigma bonds. The carbon to carbon bonds, there are three of them. It's a triple bond. And we've only shown overlap representing one part of that bond the sigma bond part of the triple bond. There are two other parts that we have to account for. The two other parts that we have to account for come from the fact that sp hybridized carbons also have unhybridized p orbitals. They have two of them. I'm going to show them drawn as straight lines for simplicity's sake, but they do have the standard p shape. I've drawn lines representing the p orbitals for each carbon, but remember, each carbon has two p orbitals, so we have to add a second p orbital to each carbon. p orbitals can overlap as well. They don't overlap quite as well as hybrid orbitals because they do their overlapping often side to side. When you see parallel p orbitals on adjacent atoms, they can overlap side to side in what is called a pi bond. you can have overlap between the upper and bottom lobes of the p orbitals. So now we've drawn side-to-side -side overlap representing one of the bonds in our triple bond. We also have overlap that comes from the side-to-side -side overlap of the horizontal p orbitals. So we have two types of pi bonds, and we have one type of sigma bond. So if we have two pi's and one sigma, we've made a triple bond. We can also work out hybridizations in larger, more complicated molecules, but the method by which we do that is exactly the same. We look at the geometry, and from that we can work out the hybridization. I've labeled the central carbons with A, B, C, and D. Carbon A has three bonds around it, two single bonds and a double bond. Three electron domains, all three are bonding. That represents a trigonal planar molecule, which means it's sp2 hybridized. Carbon B has four electron domains. All four of them are bonds, so it's tetrahedrally arranged, so it's sp3 hybridized. Carbon C 
has only two electron domains. They're both bonds, so it's sp hybridized. Carbon D also has only two electron domains, and they're also both bonds, so it is also sp hybridized.